What? I. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Hello again. Everybody back from the robot drummer. <laughs> okay. Um, I assume that most of you probably know what augmented reality is. Can you raise your hand? Everybody who knows what augmented reality is? Okay, that's pretty much everyone. But do you know actually what diminished reality is? Wow, three, four, five. And there's another thing called mediated reality. So, <laughs> one more. <laughs> um, our next speaker, which is Jan Herling from the Ilmenau University of Technology, he's a research assistant there, will give us a practical and technical introduction into what he calls or what's the term of mediated reality. Um, please give a warm applause for Jan. Yeah, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Is it loud enough? No? <laughs> Give it an, an, another try. Test one, two, three, four. Test, 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 test. So, how is it now? Better. Okay. So I'm taking this microphone now. Hopefully, this is good. If you cannot hear me, please let me know, so then I will uh, talk a little bit louder, however. So, as Jana told you before, my topic is um, a practical introduction into mediated reality, and um, I hopefully can give you as much information as possible and um, you are as technical as necessary because I think it's very difficult for you or for me to know which kind of technical background you have and so on so I try to make a um, I try to make a, not, not loud enough and uh, this is off so can you try to get this on I think the, the right speaker is off is it off now better they cannot hear anything no speaker I'm, I'm trying to to tell you anything okay we are trying to fix it now test two three four nine one thousand another test no okay we are waiting so yeah perhaps the other solution would be that you are switching to the other side but okay we are trying to to fix it we give them a few seconds more so in the meantime i can tell you something not very important for you and I have a picture of that, so you can see it in the meanwhile. I want to show you where Ilmenau is. If you have this card of Germany here, Ilmenau is right in the center of Germany. And we have a nice campus there with uh, new buildings. And it's a, yeah, it's a quite small university with uh, several um, students, not more than 7,000. So yeah now a different solution can you hear me now okay so i no yeah okay, yeah it's okay okay otherwise let us know again so i'm coming back so this is my short cv i'm uh, i studied uh, computer science scientist I'm, I'm computer scientist from uh, aachen and i did some research in the area of augmented reality at the fraunhofer institute between 2008 and 2009 and afterwards I went to Ilmenau and now I'm PhD student there since 2009. So I just saw a few hands showing that they knew augmented reality. Can I see them again? So okay this is a lot so I can I think I can skip this information but only a very few information. Augmented reality adds virtual content into a real environment. So a real environment is augmented with virtual content, you can see here, and um, we have 
several individual display technologies like smartphones or here a head mounted display and uh, of course we can use tablet PCs to look through a window yeah, in a kind of new reality, in a kind of augmented reality. So then I only show the result. We have on the one side the reality, on the other side the virtual reality and in the middle we have the augmented reality um, as defined by, I don't know, a very important guy but I, I lost his name so um, not very important I think. However, I will skip also the live demonstration because I think you know augmented reality and we can skip it. Then I'm coming to diminished reality. So what is diminished reality? We are not adding virtual content to the real environment but we are removing real objects from the real environment. So what you can see here is an image of a table and a tablet PC looking on the table and a um, webcam on the background of the tablet PC is covering or is, is um, yeah is is capturing the the, um, the the table and this smartphone lying on the table we would like to remove and we remove it with a technology I will introduce later here's another example so the same tablet PC and also a smartphone and we removed it. So it's not only working with smartphones, but it, it looks better in images. Yeah, here we have an image where we can remove a drain also, which is a very nice effect that we have water going uh, somewhere we don't know because the drain is not there anymore. So how is it going? We have to remove a real object and we have to identify it. So we have on the one side the reality again, and there we have to yeah we have to identify the object we want to remove and here this is in the center image demarked as this um, yeah mask image this black mask is defines all pixels we want to remove from the real environment and the final result then is the diminished reality so we did not remove the the glasses here on the table by hand but we did it with our technology okay so here now we have a live demonstration how it is working we have this mobile phone again on the table and we have this tablet PC and we can select the the object very roughly and then in each camera frame in each new video frame we remove this yeah this object in real time and as you can see also the shadow is casted over the object and now you can see that if we are moving too fast we have some kind of artifacts so we are moving too fast for our technology and then the visual information is changing too fast and therefore um, it cannot provide a, a, a result which is very convincing but um, we had time to improve the result and I will show some better results afterwards so here's another example here we are in the bathroom and on the background perhaps I should explain it first we have here a bathroom with a window uh, with a mirror in the back. So we have a table. We have this table here. And we have this mirror in the background. And here we have a real object. You can see the real um, video input in the lower right corner. And we removed the real object lying on the table, but not the mirrored one. So this is a nice effect, which uh, has a kind of, yeah, I don't know could be used in movies. Yeah, here we have the removed drain again. And once again, this is done in real time. So it's not a post-production. We did it um, here in real time. And here we have another example showing a window in a wall and we are removing this wall also. Now, what you see is that the background is almost homogeneous so we don't have very interesting backgrounds in this videos here the background is gray it's not very structured and so on so it might be quite simple but as I told you we had some time to improve this result this are results from 2010 and uh, later I will show you some better results with uh, more complex objects and more complex um, backgrounds yeah, this is a very nice example because of the homogeneous 
environment, this is then quite simple. So this is diminished reality. I will show the technical details about diminished reality later. Now I would like to, to introduce mediated reality because mediated reality is something very new because diminished reality is very new. Augmented reality is now about 15 years old. Diminished reality is about yeah, two or three years old because we were the first uh, in the world who could provide diminished reality in real time. And medi mediated reality is the combination of both technologies. So we would like to remove real objects from the environment and put back virtual objects again so that we have a mediated reality, an enhanced reality. We would like to modify the reality in any kind you can imagine we would like to manipulate objects, we want to remove objects and so on, but also in real time. And we ask our students, okay, what could you imagine, what could be done with mediated reality? And some of our students said, okay, it's quite simple, we make an application for architects. And here is an example, you have your smartphone, you're an architect and you want to show your, yeah, your kind of customers what could be a new building here and you are removing this building in real time and add back a new house of the customer in real time. So this is then mediated reality because simple augmented reality could not be applied because uh, yeah, the, the real building is too huge. So we could not add only uh, a virtual object because then the real object in the background would be still visible. This could not work. So another idea would be for a mediated reality, a game. So you have this street here, and of course you make an auto ego shooter for that with your real environment. So you're not left in a virtual reality, but you could go then into a real environment and could apply there your new game strategy, whatever. So this is mediated reality, and we have another example for that. So as I told you, we have a huge real object and we want to replace it by a smaller object, a smaller virtual object. And this we have done here two years ago. Um, on the right side you see, you can see the original input image. It's a live video stream again. And we have this DVD cover. We are using this DVD cover for tracking. So it's, it's the augmented reality technology to determine the camera position in the video stream. And by yeah, the exact position of the camera we can first remove the real object and we can then add back the virtual content. And on the left side then you can see the dinosaur which is virtual. So this is also done in real time. On the right we have the real input image. We use this DVD cover to track the camera position and we add back the virtual dinosaur. This is two years old. You can see also the background is homogeneous and also the dinosaur is a kind of, yeah, um, it's not absolutely registered in the reality, so it has a, um, a small jitter effect. But um, yeah, this is this is mediated reality. I don't know how many of you have seen mediated reality before in real time. Okay, no one. This is good for me. Okay, so mediated reality. Now I will come back to diminished reality and, and I would like to, to show how we can remove the real objects from the environment in real time because this is something very complicated and um, we are absolutely sure that at the moment nobody can do this also in real time. And therefore, I don't know how many people of you knew the um, content aware feeling of Photoshop. Photoshop content aware filling. Okay, this is quite a lot. So actually, we are doing nothing other but content aware filling in video streams. Because we don't know the real object behind or we don't know the real video content behind the object, but we are trying to create a final video result which is convincing for the observer. So our target is not to create the absolute best possible reality, but we want to create a reality which looks convincing or which looks yeah, understandable for the observer. So that if the observer does not know that the video is manipulated, that he is says, okay, this seems to be real. This is our target. And once again, here um, at the example of our uh, glasses and the table, we have these glasses here. We have um, the 
selection of these glasses. And now we have a separation. We have an image with a target area and a source area. So the target area has to be replaced. We want to replace all pixels from the target area by pixels from the source area. And therefore, we are simply looking for best matching yeah, pixels or best matching patches in the remaining image content to fill the final hole. So we are just stitching all, all in, image information from the surrounding image together to create a final image which looks like yeah, a real environment. And um, this is not done only in one image but in a several different image resolutions. And um, this is an example here. We have this blue object we want to remove in this image. It's actually, it's a kind of um, stopper for a door. So you can open a door and it stops at a, a specific position. I don't know the English word for that. So how does it work? We have this original image here and we first remove the, um, the color information so that we don't have so much image content and that we can, yeah, calculate a faster um, approach then. So afterwards, we are removing the quality. So we are removing actually the resolution of the image. And now on the very finest, on the very coarsest um, image information, we are removing this object very roughly. So as you can see here, we have this first small image. Afterwards, we are removing it very, very roughly with a very simple approach. And then we are trying to improve the final result with this technology I, saw, I, I showed before. So we are stitching all the remaining image content into the target area to create a better and more improved result. And after several iterations, so we're doing it several times, the image is quite good enough to come back or that allows us to come back to the next higher information. So the next higher um, image resolution and we can reuse all the information we took and we found in the in the course or in the most courses pyramid layer um, to to create now the little literally uh, better or the, the the image resolution one one level higher with more information and even on this layer we are applying the same algorithm again and again and again and afterwards if the um, the image resolution is good enough now we take this information to the highest information to, to the highest image resolution and the final case is then to add the color information back. So this is actually what our algorithm applies with, for each camera frame. So for each frame we are doing this kind of um, pyramid um, algorithm. And here we have the direct comparison on the left. You can see the real object and on the right you can see our um, diminished reality result and we can um, yeah, create this within 40 milliseconds. And I don't know whether you have tried Photoshop, but it takes mostly more than one second for an image. And this makes um, yeah, diminished reality working because if it's not real time, it's, then we have no fun about that. Uh, perhaps I should mention that if you have enough time, you can look at the image and you can say, okay, I think this is a faked image. Because if you have enough time, you can look at each pixel and you can say, okay, we have a blurring here and we have a pattern which is not absolutely perfect. But the point is, if you don't have enough time, and in a video sequence, you mostly don't have enough time because we have a lot of um, information changing in a video, you don't have the focus. And if you don't know that the image has been manipulated, you will not notice this. Notice this. And this is our target. So we want to create an image which yeah, might be... Uh, spoofing the observer. So now we can remove pixels from a real image, but now the question is how can we identify the object? So we want to identify the object in each camera frame and we have to track it. So it's nothing like augmented reality um, where we are using this markers, for example, this marker tracking where we have a unique pattern on this marker and we can identify it in the camera stream. But we want to apply it for almost each object and therefore we don't have any information in advance for, um, yeah, to identify the object. And therefore we came with the idea of a contour selection. So we are having a, a, an object we want to remove in gray here in this image and we are defining a very rough contour around this object and then we are, we are getting cl this contour closer and closer to this image and finally um, 
we have an, a kind of mask. So finally, if we have a contour with this absolutely enclosed around the object, we can define a mask. For pixels, we have to remove. And for pixels, we want to yeah, preserve. And in the next image, we can say, OK, an object will not change dramatically. So the object shape and the object position might be the same as before. And therefore, we can use the previously found contour, enlarge it a little bit, and then we shrink it again. So then we apply the same algorithm again and again and again and again. So therefore, we are able to, to, yeah, to track the object. And now we can combine both technologies for diminished reality. So we can track an object, we can detect it, and when, then afterwards we can remove all the information um, in, yeah, in, in the video stream. So now this is a result from 2010. So now we had some time to improve our um, algorithm, and I would like to show you the results. Um, as I told you before, our backgrounds were very homogeneous, not very heterogene. Um, the objects were very simple. Um, and this is actually nothing you can find in the reality. So if we want to apply our technology almost everywhere, it has to work everywhere. And therefore, yeah, we had to improve it. And uh, the main algorithm does not has changed dramatically, but it's, um, it's almost the same idea. So we have here, again, the tablet PC. We have this um, mobile phone again. But now you can see that the texture is absolutely complicated. And we can provide also for this very complicated texture a result in real time. Yes, and again, the target is not to provide the real result, but we want to provide a result which looks convincing. So now we have here some improved results of objects we can select currently. So um, we wanted to find out which objects can we select at the moment and which not. And yeah, you can see, OK, um, this backpack can be yeah, distinguished very good, and we can reselect it, and so on. And here, we have the sink in the street. We have our blue object again. And even here, our uh, trash bin, we can select very good. So I will skip it a little bit, because it's not so interesting. The enter a selection. We have a tree. Yeah. And now we are coming back to the um, Christmas calendar again. So it's very complicated for a computer to distinguish between the calendar in the background and the, the mobile phone in the, in the front of the, um, of the background. And um, yeah, therefore, we are very proud to, to achieve this in real time also. So now we have um, here the, the result comparison between 2010 and 2012. So on the left side, you can see that our previous algorithm provided artifacts and yeah, a kind of video stream which was not very coherent. But now we have a coherent video stream um, and the information does not, yeah, is not blurred and um, seems to be very coherent. So um, here's another example. And here also, so this is in background, this is ivy um, and it's very regular shape but um, here. Here you have, again, the original left and our real-time result on the right. <coughs> yeah, here perhaps this um, coat of arms, it's, I think, a very nice example because this coat of arms is fixed in the wall. So you could never remove it, could make a picture of it, and could say, OK, we find a technology which could apply diminished reality without um, your very complex algorithm. But this is not working for the coat of arms because it's fixed in the wall, and we have to apply this um, different technology. Yeah, so now some fun. What can we do with uh, diminished reality also? Yesterday, I made a fast try, and uh, I tried to make a matrix effect. <laughs> OK, so 
I would now like to, to give a short live demonstration. Normally this does not work. I know because it's, we have a prototype, um, normally this cannot work. However, I will give it a try. And um, now it's very difficult to... Let me try it. What can we remove? What can we... Oh, we have water glasses here. Okay, so we are trying to remove this water now. And I will put back my microphone because otherwise I, I need two hands. Yeah. So what you can see now is if I'm going too, too near with my shoe to the object, okay, it cannot work anymore because I didn't tell him um, to remove the object uh, with my shoe. I only told him, okay, remove the, the, um, the water, um, what is it? Whatever, the water object. So have we not something more? Yes. It's very dark in here. Perhaps I should remove the Telefonica sign. I don't know whether Telefonica is very happy about this, but I will try it. Another one, I don't know. Can I try to remove something on my shirt? Hmm. I, no, I, I'm only trying to find something interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, I try something different. Yeah, you can see now the background is very um, complicated. It's regular shaped, and um, normally we have to to um, preserve the straight lines. But currently our algorithm fails to do this, and therefore it looks not absolutely convincing. So we are not absolutely convinced about the the um, the result. But I think if you don't know that there that um, there is a manipulation, I don't know whether you would have noticed it, even. For example, if you would have seen this uh, video sequence a few seconds only. So, I think, whoops, that I'm coming to the end of my talk. Um, therefore, I then would thank you very much for your intention, attention, and um, I think we are open for questions. So, I assume you have a lot of questions. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so um, do you think that this will be a security problem in the future? A security problem? Uh, security problem, yes, because I didn't show you this slide. We also ask our students, okay, do you think there is something we can do with this technology would, would not, which would not be a good idea? And he came up with this idea. So he thought about what would be if we remove real objects or real persons and here in a demonstration, so the, the pol police guys from um, the video stream and replace them by other participants. And now you could go to a newspaper or you could uh, give it into the, the TV news and could show this result. Actually, um, currently we are, I think, at least five years away from such uh, possibilities. So, so at the moment, the technology is very complicated and it's very complicated to um, apply this technology in real time. However, I think in some days we are coming to this point where this is possible. Um, today, everyone knows that, for example, an image of a supermodel has been manipulated. So if you see Heidi Klum or whatever in the newspaper, you know, okay, this image is not real because her legs are not her legs or whatever. 
um, I think we have to know in the future that even live streams might not be real. However, of course, if we are able to remove objects with our technology, we can find out whether someone has removed an object in this image with our technology. If someone else is coming and providing a different technology we don't know, then it's getting more complicated for us to find out whether this um, video stream has been manipulated or not. Uh, um, does this answer your question? Another question? I have one. Um, we pretty much, pr probably everyone knows the Google AR glasses. Can you imagine something like diminished reality glasses where you can make people disappear that you don't like? Yeah, uh, of course. As I'm a PhD student at a very small university which is very technical, my favorite application would be to remove all women who are not single. So that what makes it much easier for me. Yes, so that we only have... Of course. Uh, however, a serious one would be... Um, to think perhaps about a mediated reality technology for Google Glasses would be that if you go through your streets at your city and you could say, okay, I don't want this building or I don't want this factory anymore or I don't want to have this tree here and I want to replace it by the different tree, a different house, a different building or whatever. This could be something for such an application because then you could define your own reality and someone else could follow you. And if he follows you, he could see the same environment and the same reality as you see the reality with his Google glasses. So this could be a kind of Twitter for the next years. I don't know. Hi, really amazing stuff. Um, I want to take what you just said a little bit further by um, what if you were to remove billboard advertising around your daily commute? Um, might that be kind of illegal to, to actually remove what they paid to put up digitally? You may not know, you may not know but... Um, do you think um, advertisement in the reality or advertisement in, for example, movies or whatever? in the reality. Yes, I think it would be legal and it is possible. For example, does any one of you know the advertisement blocker of Firefox? Yes, actually the guy who did it and who programmed it wrote me an email and said, oh, this is cool, I would like to use it perhaps in the next years. So actually at the moment it's allowed to remove advertisement as long as it's your own reality because yeah, the advertisement blocker removes it and it's allowed. So if we have all the advertisements here, we could remove it or we could remove it for you or you could remove it for you personally. I'm not allowed to remove this now for you, but um, as long as I don't ask the, um, the guys from the advertisement. But um, I think it's absolutely possible in the near future and uh, of course it's allowed in, in some conditions, yeah. We have another question. Uh, so we have augmented reality, we have diminished reality, but what is reality? Yeah, this is a good question. Actually, I'm a computer scientist. And actually, um, my reality is a very small office at our university, actually, at the moment, because I'm writing my PhD. So um, this is my personal reality. I don't know about, or I don't know nothing about your personal reality, but I think it's quite more interesting than mine. So um, lots of women. So yeah, we should change our universities. We should uh, change our contact information at least. So, actually, I don't know. 
uh, really, I think this is a question for a uh, for a guy um, studied anything like philosophy, whatever. Yeah, but it's a good question. Yeah. Anyone? Well, I guess that uh, visual reality is really appealing, but what about uh, noise? What about sounds? Um, yes, also a very good point, because um, augmented, do you know augmented reality for sound? Yeah? I don't know if everyone knows it. Augmented reality for sound is, for example, if you take your digital camera, this one here, one moment, whoops. So, if you take this one and you say, okay, I make a picture, then today there is coming a sound which thinks about the sound 10 years ago for a non-digital camera, normally, or sometimes. This is augmented reality for sound because a sound is added to your environment which is not normally there. Um, diminished reality for sounds, it's quite more interesting, I think, because you could remove sounds, for example, from the stage over there. Actually, it's quite possible, I think, um, there is a lot of research in this area to, um, um, to overlay the waves of sound. But, um, so that you, for example, you can remove a, a sound wave by the same sound wave if it's inversed, I would say. So, but I'm not an expert for that. I'm, I'm only an expert for computer science and, and uh, especially the video part. But I think it's a very important thing if you want to combine it to a final mediated reality result. You have to, for example, the, uh, yeah, the, the, the idea I told you before that you change your reality and that anyone could follow you. You could also add content, sound content. You could remove the, the noise from the street and so on. So this would also be necessary to end up in an absolutely new and enhanced and modified reality for you. But I, I don't have any information about uh, research in this area. Um, watching these pictures, I was wondering if you would recommend mediated reality uh, to a TV news channel. Would you recommend? Because it's quite dangerous. Um, I think yes. I think today we can recommend mediated reality or perhaps at the moment diminished reality because at the moment this is something for the future. So now you can say, okay, if it's something for the future, why can you recommend it now? But um, yeah, actually we have a lot of things we can do with this technology which is not related to something like this. So it's nothing to, 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 yeah, to, to modify um, demonstrations, it's nothing to manipulate wars or to remove a gun in a video stream. So we have, if you, if you think about possibilities to apply this technology, you have a lot of more ideas to use it in a peaceful way than to use it in a bad way. And therefore I really would uh, recommend it because I think um, if anyone would or wants to manipulate a video stream, then it's not absolutely necessary to do it in real time because Hollywood is manipulating a video stream since, I don't know, since 20 or 40 years. Of course, they cannot do it in real time, but um, if you have, for example, one day and you, you manipulate a video stream, you can say, okay, we just have uploaded it to YouTube and it's almost live or whatever. And um, therefore, yes, the question is only the difference between the, the real time and the not real time manipulation. We have time for one more question. Okay. Thank you, Jan, for the very, very intriguing uh, presentation. We are looking forward to the future of mediated reality. <laughs> and thank you all for being here tonight. Um, I hope to see all of you tomorrow for the last day of campus party. Please give again a warm applause to Jan.